this morning I had another talk with the German Chancellor, Herr Hitler. And here is the paper which bears his name upon it as well as mine. We regard the agreement signed last night as symbolic of the desire of our two peoples never to go to war with one another again. When Hitler rose to power, no one believed that he would actually do the things that he said. You know, our history teaches us something very simple. When an enemy says he's going to annihilate you, believe him. Iran today poses a danger that threatens to engulf the entire world in chaos. A nuclear-armed Iran is a grave danger to the peace and security of the entire world. Diplomacy has failed. Will sanctions work? If diplomacy doesn't work, the clock could run out. We've wasted years on failed diplomacy. And there's no chance that Iran will be talked out of its nuclear weapons program. Iran is believed to be expanding right now its uranium enrichment activity deep inside of a mountain bunker. Iran has tripled the pace of production of 20% grade uranium. They're transferring their facilities underground to be immune. Time is running out. They're racing towards acquiring a nuclear weapon. None of us can afford to wait much longer. For the sake of our prosperity, for the sake of our security, for the sake of our children, Iran must stop. Be Iran. Stop now. Last time, the world was silent. This time, our voices will be heard. Power is a test. Have you ever thought what you would do with it? Because the truth is, every one of us has power, and we're responsible for it. We all make a difference. Every one of us has an impact. The question is, will it be for good or for God? Some things you just have to experience to really understand. Politics is one of them. Put your belief into action. Learn what it takes to lead. This is why I can't wait for iGovern 2012. I will spend a week as a member of U.S. Congress. I will experience government from the inside. I will have fun with people who love God and love America. I will make friends that last a lifetime. I will be inspired by incredible speakers and be challenged to live an authentic faith. I will build a foundation for the rest of my life. Because the future starts with me.
and welcome to the Wiley Drake Show and to our television audience on Ustream.tv. We welcome you. Now you know what a Wiley looks like. This is me. This is the Wiley Drake Show. If you're listening on Crusade Radio, thank you so much for listening today and being a part of the show. And uh, we are live and up on Crusade Radio, and we thank the Lord for that. I just checked it out. We are up. We are on. Thank you, thank you, Crusade Radio. Crusade Radio has been our flagship, the flagship. Remember the old Navy terminology? The flagship is uh, the lead ship. It's the biggest ship, typically. Not always, but it is the lead ship. Uh, in a group of ships in the United States Navy, as well as in British navies and other navies. There's always the flagship. Uh, they all carry the flag at a lower rate, but there is one main flag being flown, uh, the, bla- the, fla- the, 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 the skipjack and so forth, the U.S. flag, whatever. Crusade Radio has now for 12 years been our flagship radio station. They have carried us. They've, ba- they've uh, put up with us. They've drug us through it. <laughs> they've blessed us, used us. And I want to say thank you to Brother Mel Pyatt and his dear wife, Shimon Porterfield Pyatt. Great, great godly people, and they serve the Lord Jesus. Very keen on education, that is, biblical education. But anyway, thank you, Crusade Radio, and we do welcome you listeners to Crusade Radio. By the way, if you'd like to um, get in touch with us, you'd like to be on the program right now, you can call Crusade Radio. Crusade Radio number is 559-592-5961. For those of you watching on television, you will see it up there on the streamer. For those of you that are listening, that is the call-in number, 559-592-5961. We've got a lot of things to talk about today. Brother Bob Bosworth is one of my schedulers. Now, If you would like to be a part of the Wiley Drake Show, we are radio, we are television. Now, I know what some of you skeptics say. Well, it's not real television. Well, it is actually more real television than what you see on the boob tube in your home. What you see on the boob tube is cut and trimmed. Most of the good stuff is left on the cutting room floor. And what you see is what they want you to see. It is indeed very biased, it is very slanted, and it is not the truth most of the time. Once in a while, the truth seeps through. Once in a while, the truth comes through. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this television show on Internet, on Ustream.tv, is literally around the world. Live, unedited, uncut, and we do not screen our callers. If you want to call in here and talk to me, you want to call in here and give me what for, you want to call in here and do anything you'd like to do, we do not screen our calls. And fact of the matter is, Brother Jaime, if you would go in my office in there and get that other cordless phone and bring it out here, I forgot to bring it in. It's on the desk there. But uh, the reason I'm asking him to get this phone is because that is the 800 number line that he's bringing me. The number that you call, 559-592-5961, is the number at Crusade Radio. The phone he just handed me is a cordless Panasonic two-line phone. (laughs) And on this phone uh, is Crusade Radio. We are broadcasting on that phone. Now, on the line two of this phone, if I put it on there, we've got a dial tone. That lets me know that line two is open. Now, if you would like to call on the 800 number, please feel free to do so. The 800 number is 1-800-839-3002. Now, we do have a caller on the 559 number. Caller, we ask you, we don't require it, but we do ask you to please identify yourself and tell us what we're going to be talking about. Go right ahead. All right. Hi, Wiley. My name is Paul Hughes. I'm in Birmingham, Alabama, and I am directing a day-long uh, citywide prayer and worship event this Saturday uh, on the 49th anniversary of a bombing that killed four girls um, in 1963 um, that made international news. And 
Uh, yeah, I'm calling uh, to let you and your listeners know about this particular prayer and worship event in Birmingham. Now, I believe you put out a press release on our good friends Christian Newswire. Is that right? That's right. And what was the title of that press release? Redigging the Wells is the title of the event. Okay, th thank you. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but my producer, Bob, of course, talked to you and encouraged you to call because Bob knows what I like, and, and, and he's done that, and, but I did not have the press release in front of me. Ladies and gentlemen, let me do a couple of things, then I'm going to get Paul back on. Uh, a couple of things is I want to encourage you to go to the ChristianNewsWire.com. That is the Christian Newswire. It is the best newswire in the world, and I make no apologies for talking about them. They're great folk. Uh, Brother McCullough over there does a great job. And I would encourage you to put ChristianNewsWire.com on your favorite and go to it regularly. We do. That's where Bob and I and others find folk that are involved in what God is doing and, and, and get the truth. And we see those press releases. And so we would encourage you to go, to go and get that as well. ChristianNewsWire.com. The title of the news release is Redigging the Wells on September 15th. Jesus, Justice, and a New Generation. And as many of you know, the theme for this program for more than 12 years on radio and television has been do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. And that's exactly part of this. Now, without further ado, uh, Brother Paul Hughes, tell our listening audience uh, the organizations that you represent and so forth, but tell us about that uh, event coming up on the 15th. Thank you. Yes, I, I represent a coalition of leaders uh, in the church across Birmingham, Alabama, and the event is to redig a well of justice that we believe was dug through the praying church of 49, 50 years ago that uh, changed the world. It was, of course, a uh, the civil rights movement that grew out of that, but it really had its beginning in the wellspring of worship, of prayer, of strong biblical preaching in mostly black churches in the South. But that well was court in Birmingham on September 15th of 63 because of the Ku Klux Klan bombing on a Sunday morning. Uh, that killed four girls, and a fifth girl who survived that bomb is now 64 years old. Her name is Bernadine, and she's an amazing witness of uh, the work of Jesus in forgiveness. Her, her story and her personality is undiscovered. She didn't even talk to her own children for 40 years following the bombing, uh, but only recently has she mm -hmm. been willing to um, come before TV cameras. Uh, on our website, there's a 12-minute interview with her, um, redigginthewells.org. And you'll, if you go there, any listener who goes there will see one of the most amazing people, Bernadine Layton, and her story of how she saw her friends die and what she was saying in that bathroom of the 16th Street Baptist Church that horrible Sunday morning um, is on that interview, and uh, she'll be on the stage. She's a part of our team this Saturday when our city comes together um, to heal and to honor the past but to change the future through prayer and worship together. Well, you know, interestingly enough, Paul, when you go back and study a little bit of history, and I'm certainly not a educator by anybody's stretch of the imagination, even my own, but as we, as we indeed do uh, understand how our nation was formed, we find indeed the church was very involved. And when we check the history on the civil rights movement, we find the church was very involved. We find out uh, women's rights and voting and all of, we find out indeed the uh, church has been involved and so I am very uh, pleased uh, to to know that uh, that is happening again and and praise God uh, we have for example an organization that we refer to called the uh, 
Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C., and we go to Washington, D.C. every month, and we've been redigging some wells on the hill over the last uh, 15 years, and, and we praise God for that. And uh, redigging the wells, ladies and gentlemen, on September the 15th. Paul, now, my audience is worldwide. People are listening to me today from right here in Buena Park near Los Angeles and Hollywood, as well as in Gaza City and Korea, North Korea and other places. Uh, if they would like to find out more, you gave the one website, redigginthewells.org. Is that right? That's correct. Birmingham is a city known around the world. Unfortunately, um, both for the righteousness of the men like Martin Luther King Jr., but also the racial injustice of our city uh, 49, 50 years ago. But we, we believe God is not done yet with Birmingham, Alabama, that there's still a story in front of us and this well of justice that is going to be in course with worship and prayer by the praying church of 2012 will touch Gaza City. It will touch uh, around the world because uh, King wrote a letter from the Birmingham jail saying injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We believe now's the time for justice anywhere to threaten injustice everywhere through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, we certainly know that the gospel brings forth justice uh, and truth. And Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Ladies and gentlemen, as many of you know that listen to this show and watch this show, you know that um, one of my very first live Wiley Drake on location broadcast was down in Alabama with Judge Moore and the Ten Commandments monument and that situation. So we go back to Alabama a few years, <laughs> and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this. This is going to be on the 15th, right? Yes, sir. And uh, Dr. Billy Graham has written a prayer of blessing specifically for this Redigging the Well prayer gathering because not long after the bomb that killed the four girls, uh, Dr. Graham in 1964 uh, came to Birmingham in spite of the Klan threatening uh, him because he came to our stadium and held the first integrated crusade uh, in the Deep South only a few months after that um, violence. And so Dr. Graham, who's still with us, we were so honored that he would um, grant their, our request that he would speak a, a new blessing to our city uh, for for justice in Jesus' name to be released to a new generation. He He's done that. So that prayer can be read on our website, redigginthewells.org. It's there, along with uh, a, a lot of other great resources. I wish we were re web streaming it, but unfortunately, uh, you'll have to drive or fly to Birmingham to be a part of the event this Saturday. But I really appreciate uh, you taking my call and letting your listeners know about it. All right. Now, if I understand it, uh, the redigging uh, event is going to be uh, on this Saturday, the 15th. Is that correct? That's correct. It's at Railroad Park, which is in the heart of downtown Birmingham. It's a beautiful uh, new park. It, it won the uh, award for the best new urban park in America last year, and so our state will be up. There will be blankets and lawn chairs and, and prayer and worship uh, all day long, testimonies from people like Ms. Layton who survived the bombing, other eyewitnesses who were there that morning, uh, as well as people who attended the Graham Crusade in 1964 who are still living and still remember uh, the tension, but also the um, power of, of uh, the witness of Jesus Christ um, to give hope. Whenever things look horrible, we can turn to Jesus, and he always gives an eternal hope. Well, brother, um, 
in reference to what you mentioned a little while ago, this is going to be at 10 a.m. Now, that's what, Central Time or Eastern Time? It is Central Time, and actually uh, we'll have a simultaneous uh, beginning both at Railroad Park but also in Kelly Ingram Park, which is right next to the church. 16th Street Baptist Church, where the bombing occurred, uh, is next to the park, and we'll have a worship and praise procession uh, from the site there of the bombing, but really this time it's more uh, to uh, honor those four girls who died and many who suffered, who uh, we believe are there in the cloud of witnesses, looking on, cheering us on, and uh, believing God for New Birmingham, but more than that, for a new generation. Well, we certainly want you to know that every day since we heard about this, and every day between now and then, each day this week at uh, 7 a.m. Uh, Birmingham time, we will be having prayer for this event. We do a telephonic prayer meeting on a telephone conference call every morning at 7 a.m. your time, and we will be praying for redigging the wells each day. And uh, I encourage folk, if you can get to Birmingham, go. Now, uh, let me let me just offer one other thing here to you, and I apologize for talking shop, so to speak, uh, on the air, but I think it's important. Here's what we could do if you could get someone. Now you're going to have this is going to be at two different locations. Is that right? Well, the procession will mark two railroad parks. So, um, yeah, from ten to noon, uh, there'll be a, a, a separate location where the bombing happened. But then by noon, everyone will be gathered in one location at Railroad Park. Well, let me ask you to do this. Let me uh, let me offer to you and offer to your organization and just sort of do a what if. What if when you start your procession, you would have someone on a cell phone call in to this program. We will carry it live on television and on a prayer line. And folks that are not able to come to Birmingham could virtually join you by telephone and by television. Well, we would, we would love that. Uh, we would love that. <laughs> here, here, here's what I would like for you to do. I'll let you go, and you and I can talk shop a little later. Let me give you my cell phone number. It's 714-865-8132. And here's what I would suggest. I would suggest that at 10 o'clock, your time, we go live on the Wiley Drake Show on the prayer line and on television and radio, and someone from your staff could call in and say, good morning, God bless you, this is Birmingham Live on the Line. We, we would be happy to do that, and uh, certainly during the period where Miss Bernadine Layton is sharing her powerful message of forgiveness, uh, that would be something that the whole world might want to hear. And what we would do then is if you had a person there with a good to high quality cell phone, uh, they could call in and put the cell phone, just use the cell phone as a microphone, and we could carry her speech, whatever is said, we just carry the whole thing live on the Wiley Drake Show on Crusade Radio on our prayer line, and on Ustream.tv. Obviously, the TV channel, let me tell you folks, we're not, I'm not there with a camera, so you, you, know, you would not see them, but on the television show, you would see me here in the studio, but you would hear the audio coming from them on the television station, on the radio station, and on the prayer line. So, brother, you've got my cell phone in a couple of hours, unless you and I talk, and you get me some cell phone numbers so that we can make sure we can hook up, and let's do a live broadcast of this thing on Saturday. Well, that sounds great, and it, it, Bernadine's um, message will begin around 12.30 that day, following the procession and some other um, speaking 
just just a FYI. So that would be her moment probably for the next 30, 45 minutes there until 1, 1, 15, so that your uh, audience can, can log that in right away. We'll do that, and here's what we'll do. The, the beauty of it is we will we will carry the whole thing live on our prayer line as well as on our television and radio stations and after it's all over and said and done after Bernadine finishes after you guys wrap it up all of that will be available in our archive and people can go back so if you can't go to Birmingham folks listen in if you can't listen in at that time you can come back later and listen to the archive and watch the archive so, brother, you and I will talk in a little while. What I really need to get from you is the people's name that will be calling in, cell phone numbers in case we were to drop them or whatever, uh, and, and, and it's fairly easy to work out. But we'll carry the whole thing uh, live around the world. That sounds great. All right, my brother. Anything else you would uh, like to share with our listening audience at this time? Anything else? <laughs> I'll just say that Judge Roy Moore is a is a friend. We're we're grateful for his uh, leadership. He'll probably uh, be the next Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Alabama again, uh, following this uh, next election. And Alabama really carries something for justice as a state. We like to say Alabama justice state and Birmingham is a justice gate and there's a well in our city that's going to be on court for justice so thank you so much for for uh let's oh, all see what God does hang on just a minute this, this September 15th all right brother thank you so much we're looking forward to it I'll be in touch give me a call in a little while on that cell phone number and you and I can work out the details but ladies and gentlemen I'm here to tell you we'll be carrying this live on the Wiley Drake Show on Ustream.tv as well as on CrusadeRadio.com as well as on our telephonic prayer meeting line. So you can go to Birmingham. That's the first choice. Second choice, you can listen on the radio. Third choice, you can watch it on TV. And, of course, even the fourth choice, you can indeed... Uh, come on the prayer line and pray with them and pray for them and hear what's going on. So, brother, thank you so much. God bless you and have a great day. Bless you, Wiley. We'll talk to you later. All right, sir. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, do we have another caller on the 800 number? Go ahead. Hey, this is uh, David Sharingo with Crossroad Bible Institute. How you doing, Wiley? Hey, I'm doing fine, and it's Wiley with a W. <laughs> Got it. Uh, and uh, thank you so much. Uh, for being a part of the show today. We appreciate you calling. Appreciate you taking it last minute. And uh, we do appreciate uh, you being a part. We were just uh, talking a little shop there with a thing that's going on down in, uh, in Alabama. And uh, we'll be doing that on Saturday. Now, uh, tell me again what the title of your press release was. Well, the press release was celebrating the, uh, the, the, the second graduation of uh, CBI students in South African prisons. That's a brand new satellite campus we have out there. And um, the, uh, the students are just excited about the program. But even beyond that, the prison officials and the wardens um, backing the program. In fact, um, we have all kinds of pictures that they sent us. Of the wardens were there handing out the CBI certificates to these young men as they completed the program. So we've got the full support there of, of the churches, but also of the prison wardens and officials who see the value of the program. So we just uh, are, are just thrilled with that. Well, we are too, my brother, and we thank you so much for sharing. Uh, obviously, as I said, my producer pulled up uh, your press release. Ladies and gentlemen, this press release is over at the best newswire service in the world. It is a Christian newswire service. In fact, that's the name of it. If you would like to see this press release that excited my producer as well as myself and what this gentleman is talking about, David Sharinga uh, is president of Crossroad Bible Institute. They're certainly not a newbie to this program. We have had many of them on with us before, and we're certainly very, very supportive 
and very thankful to the Lord Jesus Christ for Crossroad Bible Institute because of what they have done and are continuing to do. Ladies and gentlemen, our goal here is to do justice, love mercy, and walk with God. And anybody that we can find like David and Crossroads and others, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want to tell you what God is doing, and that's why we have David on with us today. And the title of the press release, if you go to their uh, press release at Christian Newswire, is Prison Warden Commends CBI South African Students. We have uh, a congressional prayer conference that I have the privilege to serve as the chairman of, and my co-chairman is a gentleman by the name of Clyde Rivers, and he is the ambassador at large for the African country of Burundi. And in fact, he's going to be on the phone with me a little later today, and we're working out our next plan to go to D.C. and working even with him on our plan in Africa. And uh, David, we'd love to be able to work with you in reference to that. But uh, tell us about what's going on there with Crossroad Bible Institute. They're celebrating the second. This is the second graduation. Uh, second graduating class. They have a graduating. This is in South Africa. They have 32 students in that graduating class. They right now have uh, over 120 students who are taking the courses. And it's just a you know brand new operation down there in South Africa, but it's just it's a wonderful thing because we see the churches working together. We have now instructors who correct the Bible study lessons in South Africa in four different denominations, different churches. We have black and white Christians working together, and of course for the history of South Africa, that's a miracle in itself. And it's just a marvelous thing how the gospel can. Um, bring reconciliation in the lives of individuals, forgiveness of sins, a new life and power in the Holy Spirit, but also the church with um, all of its warts, you know, can shine through as the precious bride of Christ seeking to uh, mend the wounds of, uh, of hurting people in this world. And of course, Crossroads has been around for 28 years now, and we have uh, this year 42,500 uh, students. Uh, we're in every prison in America, most of the jails, um, all of them as far as I know, but there's so many I can't prove that right now, <laughs> right now but we are in all the prisons. And now we have, uh, we have satellite campuses on all six livable continents in 16 countries. And you mentioned Africa. That's, that's where we're growing the fastest, but also Latin America, Asia. We have a satellite campus in, uh, in, in Great Britain, which covers England and Ireland. We're huge in the South Pacific. We're in, um, we're, we're in Papua New Guinea. We're in Australia. We're in New Zealand. We're in those island nations, you know, right around there, Vanuatu and, and Tongo and uh, Solomon Islands and all that. And so what we're finding is that the Church of Jesus Christ is just rising up in power to do the work that Christ gave them to do. And we see, um, you know, so many people in prison are languishing there. They realize that they're at the end of their rope. They need Jesus Christ as their Savior. They need a different moral foundation upon which to make choices than the, than the, than the choices that they made that got them into prison. And so they know that, uh, that, that, that there's an answer here. There's hope here. And so we are, well, as you can hear, I, I, I've been doing this for 14 years now, and I just never tire of it because it's just marvelous to get up every day and see, see God's powerful working of his spirit. Amen, my brother. And if you have a pen and paper, I want to give you a very long website, but I would encourage you to very prayerfully consider it because of what you folks are doing and because of some early development right now with us in Africa with our new co-chairman. The, the uh, website is Congressional Prayer Conference, Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C.com. So uh, if you're watching, it's on the screen. But uh, for those of you on the radio, let me give it to you again. It's a very long one, but it is Congressional Prayer Conference of WashingtonDC.com. You go to that website and you will see what we're doing, and you will also see, uh, David, our co chairman, uh, Dr. Clyde Rivers, and uh, see what his 
background is, and we would love to uh, arrange a get-together sometime in the very near future uh, with you and Dr. Rivers and what we at the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. is doing in reference to trying to bring back together uh, the multicultural uh, effort that we have had. We've been doing the Congressional Prayer Conference now since 2000, uh, and in all honesty, we have not been very successful multiculturally or mu multinationally, and, uh, but God has begun to open doors, and that's why I believe God brought Dr. Clyde Rivers on board, the ambassador from the country of Burundi, and even though he is an American citizen, he's African-American, and he is an ambassador from Burundi there in that African country and has a great deal of connection all across the whole continent of Africa and is very interested in education and what you're doing, for example, in the prisons. We do that here at our church in California and in the U.S., we have a prison ministry, but we would love to hook up with you, and I would encourage all of our listeners to go to Congressional Prayer Conference on Washington, D.C., and David, go there, and you'll see Dr. Clyde Rivers, and um, send me an email. Let me give you my email address. Send me an email with your phone number, and I'd like for us to hook up with Dr. Rivers and, and, and do some talking about this because we are uh, going into Africa more and more all the time. My email is Wiley Wiley. That's W-I-L-E-Y, W-I-L-E-Y. Wiley Wiley at A-T-T -T dot net. So it's Wiley Wiley at A-T-T -T dot net. That's A-T-T -T like the phone company. Wiley Wiley at A-T-T -T dot net. Uh, David, uh, this is the second, then, graduation ceremony how often will these happen? Every year they'll be happening. Every year, all right. Every year, after, yep, that's right. It's, you know, every year uh, about this time. So it's something that um, they, they, they keep turning them out and, and more and more come. And uh, back to what you were saying before, anything I can do to be part of that, that, that congressional conference, uh, please feel free to call me. And I'm, I'm so excited to hear about, about, about the, the good doctor who's joining your team with that because... Um, you know, we're very thankful for what God has done through all us old white guys. But you know what? The, the, the body of Christ is bigger than that. <laughs> Amen, brother. Amen. You're absolutely right. And, and that's one of the things we talked about yesterday with Family Research Council and, and the pledge uh, Sunday uh, was to bring together red and yellow, black and white. I said my mom used to say, teach us a song, red and yellow, black and white. They're all precious in his sight. And we want to work together and uh, send me an email with your phone number. Dr. Rivers and I will call you and we'll get together. We'd love to work with you. love to have you a part of the Congressional Prayer Conference. We're going to be in D.C. Uh, we, we go to D.C. basically once a month, usually the last week in the month. This particular uh, month, we're going back on the 24th. We'll be on the Hill with the Congressional Prayer Conference praying with all kinds of pastors, again, red and yellow, black and white, praying on the hill, uh, talking, uh, strategizing, and uh, we'll be there that whole week of the 24th, and we're looking forward to that. And uh, Where are you located, brother? I'm in, uh, I'm in Grand Rapids, Michigan, but I get to D.C. Last time I was there a couple months ago, I was invited to uh, attend uh, Chuck Colson's funeral. Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, I was in I was in a national memorial there and stuff, and uh, we get there for various reasons. Um, so anytime you need me there, you just call, and I'll hop on a plane and be there, okay? Well, well brother, we certainly will, and we will encourage you to do that. We, we go, like I said, our basic scenario at this point, just to give you a little breakdown, and I'm going to share this with my audience as well. When we go to D.C., and we'll be there on the 24th, we will meet at 117 2nd Street Northeast. That's directly across the street from the Supreme Court. Every day in a prayer chapel there, we will meet at 8 o'clock and pray looking right out the window at the Supreme Court. From 8 to 10.30, we will have a I, prayer meeting. I, yeah, 
Yeah, I can picture it right now, yep. And see the Supreme Court and see the Capitol, and it's right there on 2nd Street, one street yep. behind the Supreme Court. But our scenario is this, 8 to 1030, we have a prayer vigil and a meeting there for our nation and for our world. Then at 1030, from 1030 to 1230, for the next two hours, our prayer warriors go on uh, the national uh, prayer embassies walking tour. In other words, we walk over to the Supreme Court. We walk over to the Capitol, to the Senate, to the House. We walk over to the Lincoln. We walk over to the Martin Luther King uh, display and so on and so forth. We walk over and for two hours we do a walking prayer tour. And then we come back at, at uh, 1230 uh, to the Supreme Court cafeteria and have a lunch debriefing there in the Supreme Court cafeteria uh, and have lunch together and debrief together. And then on Tuesday uh, in the afternoon, we go to the Family Research Council at 2 o'clock for a prayer meeting in their prayer room. And then on Wednesday night, we do a tour of the Capitol by van uh, with the uh, National Prayer Embassy. And then on Thursday, we go back to the same schedule, but we also go to the Family Research Council with Tony Perkins and Pierre Bynum and those folks. We do that on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Friday. And we're going to be there for the David's Tent event. And uh, we would encourage all of you folks to check it out. And if you want to get in touch with me and find out more information, I'll give you my phone number and my email. My phone number is 714-865-8132. My email is wileywiley at net. We would love to have any of you come uh, to D.C. for this event. We do not put on an event, i.e., that we meet at a hotel or a conference center. Everybody does their own thing, but we are there to pray and to strategize and to get work done. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with conferences or meetings, but we've chosen not to do that. We've chosen to be prayer warriors, boots on the ground, and to work together and to share together. And we would encourage you to come for one day or all week whatever you can come and whatever you can do. And uh, we will be broadcasting it. We'll be doing live TV broadcasts from there. And uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to do it at the Supreme Court again. We did that for about a week, and then they decided that was a violation of the separation of church and state and kicked us out. But <laughs> but anyway, brother, well, God, God bless you, and let's keep in touch. Hey, Wiley, um, always a pleasure to talk with you, pray for you guys, and um, we, we just, I uh, just hope that you'll just continue to flourish and your borders expand, so. Well, thank you, brother. Now, before you go, though, we've been talking about a lot of things. The title of the press release is Prison Warden Commends CBI South Africa Students. Tell our listening audience if they'd like to find out more about that, not only the press release, but what about the website? Okay, cbi.fm or cbi.tv, but cbi.fm will bring you right there. Um, we can always use more help for people to be instructors, and that is to correct the Bible study lessons uh, of, of the prisoners. And you do that right in the safety of your own home, and you write them letters, and it's safe and secure. Um, and if you love the Lord and love his word, then you can be an instructor, and we'll train you. Um, and so they can come and find out all about the program all around the world, but even more, you can have part in a hands-on ministry to prisoners. So uh, that's at cbi.fm, like radio. So, um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for the thanks for the shout-out. I'd appreciate it, Wiley. Well, we appreciate it. And ladies and gentlemen, you know you've heard me many times, and you're seeing, if you're watching us, you're seeing on the screen all of this information. But if you're listening on the radio, go to CBI. Crossroads Bible Institute, cbi.fm. And if you've heard this program, you've listened over the years, you've heard us have different instructors on here, I encourage you. We had a man in our homeless shelter here that is now a, an instructor for CBI. He corrects those uh, lessons at home and sends them to uh, the, the prisoners and so forth. If you're interested in that, you'd like to do that. What a great, great service ministry you can have. And like David said, it's very safe. You don't 
have to go into the prison or anything. You go in by mail. And so go to cbi.fm. Let them know you're interested in becoming an instructor. And by the way, folks, let me add to the end of this, and of course, Brother David didn't ask me, but I'm going to do it anyway. We're talking about prayer. We're talking about being an instructor. We're talking about praying. But I also want to talk to you folks about practice, uh, you know, put your money where your mouth is. Send them a donation. Uh, go to the website. There's a donate button there, I'm sure. And uh, make a donation. Invest in their ministry, would you please? David, thank you wow. so much. That is so very kind of you. Thank you, Wiley. We'll put anything that comes to good use. You know that. We know that. We, we, you have a great reputation with the Wiley Drake Show. You have even more so a great reputation with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we know, ladies and gentlemen, you want to invest a few bucks? Most of us don't have a lot of investment money for the ministry. But I'll tell you what. You want to get a big bang for your investment buck? Go to cbi.fm. Make a donation. You'll get a big bang for your buck with these folks. God bless you, brother. And listen, one other thing before you go. If any of your graduates, if any of your folk would like to come on my show, if any of them are anywhere near Los Angeles, uh, we will be glad to get them on television. Uh, I'll be broadcasting live on Capitol Hill next week. If any of your graduates can be in uh, D.C., we'd be glad to put them on the Wiley Drake Show on television and let our audience see them and congratulate them on their graduation. They can come into the studio here in California. They can be in my mobile studio wherever I might be, and we'll be more than happy to do that. Thank you very much, Wiley. We'll keep that in mind, and um, I hope to be in California this winter uh, sometime. I have to make a trip to Southern California, so maybe we could hook up then. We'd love to have you come in the studio and be on the show with us. All I've got to do is set it up. Okay, Wiley. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you, David Syringa, President, Crossroad Bible Institute. David, have a great day. Yep, you too, Wiley. God bless. Bye-bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was David Syringa. S-C-H-U-R-I-N-G-A, Syringa. I hope I'm pronouncing it right, David. <laughs> I think I am. His first name's David. Dr. David Syringa, President, Crossroad Bible Institute. And if you'd like to reach him, you can send him an email at david, david at cbi.fm. David at cbi.fm. And Dr. Rivers, if you're watching this show, uh, please get in touch with our good friend David. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, please pray for my brother, uh, my co-worker, my co-chairman uh, with the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. And Dr. Rivers, I think this is an exciting opportunity for us to work together, not only as uh, the CPC, but with CBI. We get all these letters together, you know, CBI, Crossroad Bible Institute, and CPC, the Congressional Prayer Conference. So we get CBI and CPC all together. We're going to do something for JESUS, all right? And that's our goal, folks, to lift up Jesus Christ, whether it's in a prison in South Africa, a prison in America, a church in Buena Park, California, a church in Victorville, Wherever it is, whatever it is, ladies and gentlemen, we want to lift up Jesus Christ. Now, we're expecting some other callers, but I'm going to try one other call before we take that call. Because there is a group of young people that are going across country and we want to try to contact them if we can. Young lady by the name of Christina Garza. We're going to see if we can get her on the line. She's with an organization called Survivors. to get Christina Garza. Christina is the Campus Outreach Director for an organization called Survivors. 
Hi, you reached Christina Garza. Please leave me a message and I'll call you back as soon as I can. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Christina, it is now 9.45 a.m. California time. We're live on the Wiley Drake Show on Crusade Radio and on television. And we would love to have you come on with us if you can call us in the next 15 minutes. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we encourage you to go to the website, Acts 529, A-C-T-S-F-I-V-E-29.com, Acts 529.com, and check out what's going on. These folks are traveling to D.C. They may be en route as we speak. And, Christina, we'd love to have you come on. God bless you, and have a great, great day. We'll be on again at 5 this afternoon. We would love to have you call in or maybe have Jeff or someone call in. God bless you, and have a great, great day. All right, folks, we were trying to get in touch with Christina. I'm going to see if uh, if their other number. See if we can get someone at uh, Campus Outreach for Survivors. Survivors.LA is the website. That's the overall organization. Give them a call. Check them out. Survivors.LA. Survivors.LA. Thank you for calling survivors. We're not in right now to take your phone call, but if you leave us a message, um, we will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you and have a great day. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished recording, press pound. To cancel, press star. This is Pastor Wiley Drake, and we're checking to try to get you folks on the line with us. God bless you and have a great day. All right, I'm going to wait just a moment. We may be getting another call on line two. We were, they were trying to get through, I believe, on line two, and uh, we want to uh, check and see. Otherwise, we'll try to call one of the other young men that's, on, that's possibly on the trip. Not sure what happened to our volume here, but uh, we'll continue on here as best we possibly can. Okay, volume's up over there, all right, but Crusade Radio is not coming out very clear. But anyway, to God be the glory. Uh, What I'm going to try to do now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to try to reach um, uh, a young man that I met, uh, uh, Christopher, I believe it's tennis, T-I-N-N-E-S, but I'm not sure. We'll ask him if we can get him on the line. We'll try to call him. And um, These kids, I say kids, to an old guy 68, everybody's a kid, right? <laughs> uh, but anyway... Um, Christopher uh, is one of the young people that's involved. Hi, this is Chris. Hey, Chris, this is Wiley Drake. Uh, how are you? I'm well, sir. Good morning to you. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Listen, we're live on the air, and I was trying to get in touch with Christina. was unable to get through. Are you on the trip with them? Um, I'm not going on the trip, unfortunately. Chelsea, I know, she, she's going to have enough money to get there. So, you know, they're not leaving until closer to the end of the month. She may have to fly out there now. To my understanding, there's a bunch of people that are going to take a road trip, and they were talking about stopping in New Mexico on the way out, Albuquerque, and then maybe on the way back, stop a couple places. But I don't know that they're doing any activism anywhere other than, than D.C. 
Yeah, okay. Well, I understand that. What we were wanting to do is to try to just get a trip report from them. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, like a play-by-play -play kind of thing. Yeah, just sort of call in. And I tried to call Christina but was unable to get through to her. Do you know, has the traveling, the road crew left yet or not? That will be helpful. No, to my knowledge, um, you know, they're, they're not gonna, they're supposed to be in D.C. till the end of the month now, uh, leading into October. So. Oh, no, I understand that. But listen, I, if you have, I, I don't... Time. I don't want you to give it to me over the phone, yeah. but but if you could call Jeff and have right. him call me, tell him I'm trying to reach him. Okay, I'll do my best to get a hold of Jeff or Christina and have him reach out to you, Wiley. I got your card. Okay, and you've got the 800 number on there. Yeah, now that I think about it, hang on one second. Let me see if Jeff gave me his card when, because uh, I know we had swapped. Um, yeah, you know what? Hey, yeah. Christina, I got her mobile number. You, you ready for that? I got Christina's mobile number. How about, okay. Je how about Jeff? Yeah. All right. Christina Garza. Yeah, she's the campus outreach director for Survivors. So, uh, yeah, I've got her card. How about Jeff? Do you have a number for him? No, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll track it down and get back to you with that information. Okay, and call me on the 800 number. Okay, Wiley. Thanks for the call. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Have a great day. Right. You have a good day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was one of the fellows that works with them. Uh, he uh, uh, gave him a little free advertisement. If you're looking for a New York life insurance agent, uh, he's a great young man. He's financial services professional for New York life, and uh, he gave me his cards, got his California license number on it, got his phone number. If you'd like to call him, uh, please feel free uh, to do so. Uh, he's down in Irvine. He is a licensed agent, and uh, you can reach him in Irvine, and you can call him, and uh, uh, you can also send him a uh, email if you'd like. It's C T I N N E S C T I N N E S at f t dot newyorklife dot com. So send him an email and let him know you're praying with him and praying for him, and I'm hoping to get uh, maybe some of these folks to call us. We only have about eight minutes, but that's okay. If we don't get them now, we'll get them a little later. And I uh, want to share with you, though, won't you, while we're waiting for them, I'm going to share something with you. As many of you know, I'm very unapologetically a Baptist, and uh, one of my real good friends is also a Baptist, and he does a, a thing called This Day in Baptist History. Now, that was yesterday, but uh, Reverend Samuel Stillman became the sixth pastor of the First Baptist Church of Boston, Massachusetts on September the 9th, 1764, which was the fourth oldest church in America. The church had endured persecution, decline, and revivals. At age 27, Stillman found around 60 discouraged members. Those of prominence often attended services, including Pre President John Adams. Samuel, a small man weighing less than 100 pounds at the time of his death in 1807, did gigantic exploits to God. Many of them were first. He had to flee during the Revolutionary War, but returned to regather his flock. He helped establish America's first Baptist college. He was a leader in the organization of the Warren Baptist Association to assist in the fight against the entanglement of the church and state. In 1802, 10 years before the Judsons and Rice went to Burma, he led in starting the Massachusetts Baptist Mission Society. And First Church was the first to install a stove for heat against the bitter New England winters. Alas, what worldliness they had. They wanted to be warm in church. <laughs> Nathan Wood, the history of the First Baptist Church of Boston, Philadelphia American Baptist Publication Society, uh, 1899, on page 242, said, What worldliness. They wanted to actually be warm while they were in church in those bitter New England uh, winters. Dr. Greg J. Dixon, adopted from This Day in Baptist History, Volume 1, and uh, I would encourage you to uh, contact them and be a part. All right, ladies and gentlemen, 
Thank you so much. Uh, we encourage uh, uh, you to stay tuned. We only have about five minutes left. And uh, I'm sorry? Well, but I can't. Well, that's on the regular, that's on the church line, so I'm not going to try to take that. Thank you, though. Uh, folks, if you're calling on the church line, the 5227201, I, I do not answer that during the show. If you would like to call, though, and be on the show, you can reach us at 559-592-5961. Give us a call on that number, and we'll be glad to take your call. But uh, also, you can also call us on the 800 number, 1-800-839-3002. Now, before we go off this morning... And uh, Brother Jaime, if you can pull something up on this and put it up, it's acts529.com, A-C-T-S-F-I-V-E, the number 29.com, acts529.com. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, this is in reference uh, to dealing with the future of religious freedom in America. And it is greatly at risk. Join us. And I will be there, folks. Join us for 72 hours of continuous prayer and arrest at the White House. I've been arrested there before. Don't stand for this injustice. Act now. With the recent Supreme Court decision on Obamacare, the future of religious freedom in America is at risk. Obamacare will force people of faith, that's you and I, to violate their conscience and be a direct participant in the killing of children. Ladies and gentlemen, I will not participate in any way to kill children. In the Christian, If the Christian community does not take a stand and send a powerful message to President Obama that we must obey God rather than men and we'll never comply with the HHS with immoral and unjust government mandates that violate our faith, our religious freedom, and the First Amendment will be trampled on before our very eyes. This movement is fraught with an unprecedented urgency of the hour. So we're issuing a national call for Christians and all our fellow Americans of whatever creed to come to the White House and be part of this prayerful, peaceful, and prophetic witness for life and justice. Go to Acts 5, A-C-T-S-F-I-V-E, Acts 5. 29.com. Please, please join us. Please join us for 72 hours so that future generations will have that freedom and that the liberty to practice their faith will not be taken away. Will you join us for a prayer and action? Will you go with us to Washington, D.C. and be part of this historic event? You have a part to play. You have a duty in this day of crisis. We must obey God rather than men. And I want to give you a little bit of the schedule. On uh, September the 30th, September the 30th, at uh, 12 to 1, there will be a rosary. Now, this is for you Catholic folks. There will be a rosary led by Father Frank Pavone. And if you Baptists get upset with me, too bad. I'm going to be there with Dr. Frank Pravone, a Catholic priest. And if you don't like that, too cotton-picking bad. Father Frank Pravone's a godly man and a gracious man, and I'm going to be there to participate in that rosary from 12 to 1. 1 1.30 to 3.30, we're going to stand up for religious freedom and have a rally with national known speakers. 3.30 to 4.30, there'll be prayer and public witness on the House sidewalk, ladies and gentlemen. 
And also from 12 to 1 p.m., there will be not only this rosary, but there'll be other things going on as well. And we encourage you to be a part of those. There's going to be an evangelical prayer meeting, and we encourage you to be a part of that. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to go. May God bless you. Please join us back at 5 o'clock. We'll be back here with the Wiley Drake Show. Remember, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. This morning, I had another talk with the German Chancellor, Herr Hitler. And here is the paper which bears his name upon it as well as mine. We regard the agreement signed last night as symbolic of the desire of our two peoples never to go to war with one another again. When Hitler rose to power, no one believed that he would actually do the things that he said. You know, our history teaches us something very simple. When an enemy says he's going to annihilate you, believe him. Iran today poses a danger that threatens to engulf the entire world in chaos. A nuclear-armed Iran is a grave danger to the peace and security of the entire world. Diplomacy has failed. Will sanctions work? If diplomacy doesn't work, the clock could run out. We've wasted years on failed diplomacy. There's no chance that Iran will be talked out of its nuclear weapons program. Iran is believed to be expanding right now its uranium enrichment activity deep inside of a mountain bunker. Iran has tripled the pace of production of 20% grade uranium. They're transferring their facilities underground to be immune. Time is running out. They're racing towards acquiring a nuclear weapon. None of us can afford to wait much longer. For the sake of our prosperity, for the sake of our security, for the sake of our children, Iran must stop. Be Iran. Stop now. Last time, the world was silent. This time, our voices will be heard. <laughs>